Well, there is no question that the world of digital imagery has changed dramatically over the past few years since AI entered the picture, and it has become easier and easier for just about anyone to create images and artistic works that are pretty much mind-blowing. And believe me, there are still people out there who are not immersed in AI every day and will still be blown away by things that you were creating a year ago. Every now and then you want to be reminded of that. Not everybody knows as much about what's going on in AI as you and I do. There are so many tools for AI generation, and some of them are complex, some of them are simple, some of them are free, some of them are paid, they're all over the place, and they use all sorts of different techniques to get exactly the image that you want. Today, we're going to talk about Omnigen, and Omnigen is here to shake up once again how imagery is created in the AI space by using what's called multimodal prompting to create and edit images. What that means is, instead of just text descriptions, you can also prompt with images, sketches, even audio in theory, and instead of using all sorts of complicated plugins and things like control nets and IP adapters, it takes natural language and the images that you provide and does the image creating and editing for you. Now this technology is not perfect. It's definitely in its infancy and quite frankly, I don't know how many professionals would use this in their everyday life, but this is definitely something to watch because I don't see how this is not the direction of image editing in the future, at least in the immediate future. So I want to show you the basic idea of it so you can go, hey, that's pretty cool and show you how you can play with it. Omnigen is free and open source, which means you can download the code if you have the computer to run it and you can get that code in various places, including their GitHub, which will fully explain what Omnigen is all about and give you some examples of what it can do. You can start, for example, with a text prompt. A young woman sits on a sofa holding a book, etc. It creates this image here. Now, with a text prompt alone, you can just say, remove the woman's earrings, replace the coffee cup with a clear glass filled with sparkling iced cola. Omnigen will make those edits for you just based on that prompt. Now, they got a couple of examples of what you can do for here. You can say, detect the skeleton of the human in this image, and it's going to create this image right here. Those of you who have worked with Stable Diffusion before recognize this is an open pose image that will guide the pose of the image you're going to create. But you don't need to know any of that. This is going to create this skeleton. And then from there, you say, generate a new photo using this picture and text as conditions. And then colon, a young boy is sitting on a sofa in the library holding a book. So it took the pose from this picture, created this skeleton. And from that, you can create a whole new image. The other way they could branch here is saying, following the pose of this image, generate a new photo. A young boy is sitting on a sofa in a library holding a book. So we skipped this step completely and just said, following the pose of that image, and it created this image. Here's a kind of a crazy prompt. If the woman is thirsty, what should she take? Find it in the image and highlight it in blue. It's asking the AI to make this decision, and then it says, okay, well, in this picture, if she's thirsty, she's going to take this drink, and then it highlights it in blue. Incredible. And then from this image, a professor and a boy are reading books together. The professor is the middle man in image one. The boy is the boy holding a book in image two. So here's image one and here's image two. It knows how to identify the man that you want to put in this picture. It combines them based on your text prompt and the references you made. So that's the general idea and there is so much more you can do. And we're going to go through several examples. Now, if you're not familiar with using GitHub and how to install code and all of that, there is a way that you can install this code on your local machine using a service called Pinocchio that I've referenced down in the description that will allow you to easily get this stuff going. Or if you just want to try this out on a computer that's not your own and cluttering up all your hard drive with new code before you're even convinced you're going to use it. This is a perfect example of when you would use Mimic PC. Mimic PC is a regular sponsor of our program because they provide access to higher end AI applications that not everybody is able to run on their computers or in a situation like mine, I can run them on my computer, but I choose not to when I can offload them and really run them for pennies and duplicate tasks over and over. There are so many reasons to have remote computing systems, even if you have a good system of your own, because because if you're in production, why not multiply your output? And that's what I'm able to do with something like Mimic PC. But in this case, we're going to use it to play with Omnigen. Setting up an account with Mimic PC is free. Once you do that and log in, you'll see a screen somewhat similar to this, although you won't have any apps installed yet if you're brand new to it. In your case, you would click Add a New App, and you would click on Omnigen here, and then click on Get Started. Here's where you would choose your GPU, what kind of computing power you have for this. I have basically almost always gone to the Ultra because it gets things done so much faster. I end up saving money using the Ultra. Now, I cannot promise that's going to be the case with every one of these applications, but in the ones that I've tested, it's definitely worth it for me. 
Once you choose your hardware, you click create and start and give it a few minutes to start up the machine. Once it does, you'll probably see a screen like this. Now this over here is internal to Mimic PC. You don't really need to mess with this at all during this process. So we're gonna click this icon here, close this so we can have maximum screen space. It gives you a basic idea of how to use this and what to do if you have some problems, but we're gonna go through some of their examples, but use our content to demonstrate. So their first example is just using this as a regular text generator. So if I click this down here, it fills the prompt with a curly haired man in a red shirt is drinking tea. We won't do that. We'll just say a dog wearing a blue bow is sitting by a lake. Right now I've got the height and width set for 1024 by 1024. I'm going to leave everything else at the default right now and click on generate image. Be prepared to wait for these images. Generally speaking, these 1024 by 1024 images that I'm generating, if you're not doing any editing, if you're just doing an image generation like this, maybe takes about 30 seconds or so. But once you start playing with editing and doing some of the other tricks we're going to do, expect to wait 60 to 90 seconds for a generation of 1024 by 1024. I did experiment with going 512 by 512 for these images and it does go faster, but it don't look good. So we're back at 1024 by 1020. So there's our generated dog with a blue bow in your hair. Very high quality image, looks fantastic. Now let's go down to the next example. The woman in, and then there's this gobbledygook here, waves her hand happily in the crowd. So I click on that. Now it's going to fill out this prompt and fill in this picture, which we are immediately going to replace with some pictures that we have created ahead of time. I'll drag this picture of Tracy over here and drop it here, and then I will explain why. So the woman in image one basically is what this is saying with all of this hypertext markup waves her hand happily in a crowd so what it's doing is it's creating a new image of a woman waving happily in a crowd and telling the ai that it's this woman the one in image one now when we generate this image there it is and that took about 70 seconds to do now it is not an exact likeness you can play a little bit with the guidance scale and so on but this isn't a true full-on face swap it's not doing models of the faces so there's going to be a little variety but you can see they got the basic idea the shape of the smile and everything it's pretty darn close we do have a four finger situation going on here but this didn't require any kind of control net or anything like that to say i want her to wave i just said hey have her wave and it's the same woman let's go to the the next example. I'm going to click this and let's put in our own image of two people together. And let's say a woman in a black dress with white polka dots is reading a book. And I'll even say, even though we don't need to, with red hair, just to give it as much detail as possible in image one. So ideally we'll have this woman reading a book. Where should we have her reading a book? By the sea. All right, so we should have this woman reading a book by the sea. Generate. Okay, about 66 seconds, and there she is. We got that woman out of that picture. She is on the beach, and she is reading. Pretty cool, right? Let's keep it going. I'm going to click this, and we've got two women are raising fried chicken legs in a bar. A woman is image one woman, right? And the other woman is image two. All right, so we've got these two distinctly different people. I'm going to change these out. We'll bring in Presley here as one woman, and we'll bring in Tracy again as the other woman. And instead of raising fried chicken, how about we say two women are eating pizza in a restaurant, and then it still identifies these two women. So let's just see what happens. Again, I'm not changing any of this stuff up here. I am using only 1024 by 1024 images because in my test, if I use different size images, images up here. I would often get errors during generation. It just seems a lot easier at this point to keep things nice and square. So all of my test images are 1024 by 1024. I can keep the height at 1024 by 1024 here, or I could click use input image size as output, although I sometimes get errors when I use that, even though they're the same size. So I leave that off and just do this manually. Let's click generate, see what happens. Now this one took 97 seconds. It was obviously asked to do a little bit more, but wow, what a good job. Now we lost the designs on her sweater, a little less like her in the face, did a pretty good job on Presley, kept her clothes completely right, and they're eating pizza. So that's a good result in my mind. Probably one of the best I've done so far, actually. Let's go down to the next one. Clicking that, brings it up here. A man and a short-haired woman with a wrinkled face are standing in front of a bookshelf in a library. The man is in the middle of the image one group, and the woman is the oldest over here. So we would have this man and this woman standing in front of a bookshelf in a library. So let's do our own version of this. I don't have a picture with that many people in a group, but we'll do some identifying in other ways. Let's try this image here and then this image here. We'll say a man 
and we will replace a short-haired woman with a wrinkled face with a young girl are standing in front of a giant teddy bear at an outdoor market. I love generating outdoor markets for some reason. The man is actually the man wearing a purple shirt in, and we're gonna say this is image two, so we'll change this to a two, and the young girl is the girl in the pink shirt in, and this is image one. Woo, let's see what happens. I will also note that when you choose these presets down here, it makes the changes to these scales here. So you can use this as a learning tool to see how they're getting the results they're getting and what happens if you change them. Let's run this real quick. So it totally nailed it. That is absolutely the guy here with the purple shirt. That's the girl right there with the pink shirt. They are in standing in front of a giant teddy bear at an outdoor market. We'll skip this one because it's pretty similar to the last one. We'll click this. The flower from image one, this here, is placed in a vase, which is the middle on the wooden table of a living room. Let's see what we can do that's similar to that. Let's bring in this image that has donuts and then this image, which has a nice fancy plate here and see if we can get those donuts on this plate. So the donuts in image one are placed on the plate sitting on the table in image two and take that out with the living room stuff and cross our little tiny fingers. They're not that tiny and see what happens. 92 seconds later, we get donuts and they're on a plate, but I don't know if it's the plate. I just realized we had extra little slash marks in here. So that might've caused this problem. Let's run this again. It is very important that you watch the formatting of these prompts because if any of this is typed incorrectly or these little pipes are wrong or any of it, you're gonna get an error. And I'm really hoping that as time goes on, it'll be a lot easier than just having to cut and paste this to say, I want this image here. We should be able to click right here and it should just go up into the prompt, don't you think? Okay, so we have colored donuts and we actually have a plate with the same little design around the rim. I think I'm only saying they're placed on a plate so it's focusing on a plate. I have another approach. The napkin in image two on the plate in the front is replaced by the colorful donuts in image one. Well, I'm gonna move on because these donuts are irritating me. Let's do this thing where we detect a skeleton and then create an image out of that. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that so it fills it in up here. I'm gonna replace the image, of course. We'll use this image here because he's definitely standing in a very specific position. Detect the skeleton of human in this image. Generate. It got the skeleton of the man and it picked up a little something extra here too. I'm not gonna worry about that. Now let's scroll down and get this prompt up here. So we're gonna take that one out, which came with the prompt. We're gonna slide this one in here and generate a new photo using the following picture and text as conditions. So it's gonna use this as the basic pose for whoever we do here. And a young boy is sitting on a sofa in the library holding a book, blah, blah, blah. How about instead a retro vintage robot is in a cluttered lab looking through an instruction manual. So it's kind of like using control net, only we're not loading any control net models. So Let's generate this image. I'm not sure what it's gonna do over here with this little thing. It's gonna try to do something, I'm sure. All right, that did exactly what we wanted it to do. We got the retro robot, he's in the same position. He's looking at an instruction manual. We recovered. Well, even though we suck at donut manipulation, you can see the potential of this and the general direction it's going. I'm sure all of this will get better and more intuitive and easier to use and certainly give more consistent results. But I am pretty impressed with most of what we did here today. So if you'd like to play with it, there are several ways to do that. And if these are the types of tools you like to learn more about, well, why not subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that already, of course, because these are the types of things we talk about all the time. If you subscribe now, I will not look for you. I will not pursue you. But if you do not, I will look for you. I will find you. And I will...